Okay, let's talk about the filter. Now, this is the traditional Tom Oberheim 12 decibel per octave filter that is such a, a character. It has such character. It has such a beautiful sound. Obviously, the focus of the recent OB6. Just truly a beautiful filter. Let's have a listen. Um, I'm just going to adjust the frequency cutoff. It's just a really beautiful tone. Let's listen to it with a little bit of resonance. A little more resonance. A little more. That was just such a great sound. How about all the way up? That is a great sounding filter. And you'll notice it doesn't go into filter self oscillation because 12 decibel per octave filters usually do not. And uh, that's fine. You just get that beautiful, rich, gorgeous, frothy sound. But we're not done. Uh, <laughs> because this is a state variable filter. It's not just a low pass. So we also have a notch. Totally cool. And um, in addition to that, we have a high pass filter. Sounds wonderful. Let's hear that with resonance. It's a great sound. And the notch with resonance as well. Resonance just doesn't really work with notch because like a resonant sound is actually the opposite of a notch to a degree. But you can hear it going on there. Notch sounds better uh, without resonance. But I just, I can't get enough of that tone. That is true analog character. It's definitive analog character. It is the beauty to balance the Moog 24 decibel per octave filter. The Oberheim 12 decibel per octave filter is like its companion as far as it's the beautiful, beautiful version of the 12 decibel per octave filter. <laughs> But of course we are not done because there is also a bandpass. And when you switch bandpass on, the this knob no longer functions. And so you can get bandpass noises. And of course you can adjust the band by using the resonance. There's a wide range of ways that the bandpass can uh, accentuate frequencies in the range. Great sounding. Okay, the other thing that we need to talk about is the modulation of the filter. Instead of you turning the frequency knob, we have the option of having something else turn the frequency knob. For example, envelope two. Now this modulation knob uh, allows positive modulation and negative modulation. So this is the way you can get like negative envelopes. So we'll explore that after we listen to the envelope a little bit here. Great 
sounding. Uh, don't forget, we can also, the envelope uh, will make a different sound in the notch. to the negative a little bit here. And of course the high pass. <laughs> and band pass of course. Negative, of course. And you can do that in any of the other types of filter. <laughs> That's so big. It's so warm. It's just, oh, man. Okay. We also can use LFO as a modulation source. We can use negative LFO, although it sounds the same. That's where Notch really shines. I love that sound. And high pass. <laughs> Got a pretty nice sizzle there. Oh, man. <laughs> and band pass. <laughs> So uh, with a state variable filter uh, and with this great 12 decibel per octave tone, you have so many different options. And that's where the SEM really stood out because you know, like for example, the mini Moog, which would have been the sense you would compare this to, the mini Moog only had a low pass filter. So, you know, that was the sound that it had and it was stuck there. Whereas the SEM, which was designed to help you expand synthesizers like the mini Moog to have more varied and diverse sounds with this uh, state variable filter, you have a whole bunch of other filter types to explore and create new and different timbres with that the low pass filter isn't even capable of. And then on top of that, having the 12 decibel per octave tone, which is also different than the 24 decibel per octave tone of the Minimog at the time, uh, it just really expanded the options. And so this relatively simple module allows you an incredible diversity of sound just in the filter alone, let alone with the other functionality. And before we go, I just do want to point out that, yes, if you turn this knob to the left, you'll get a... Uh, A440, but if you turn it to the right, you'll get noise. That's your noise source. So you're not without noise. Uh, in addition to having your saw pulse and the mixture thereof. So that is the filter of the synthesizer expander module, a single one on the Tom Oberheim 2 Force.